The first and most important thing relating to the investigation of an alleged crime scene is to protect the scene so that items which may ultimately have evidential value are preserved and protected, enabling them to be recovered by crime scene investigators or forensic scientists. Once a crime scene has been identified, police will put in place a cordon or a number of cordons across the area. These may consist of simple barrier tape and are used to block off areas of the scene. There are often inner and outer cordons established where access to the area is controlled in different ways. For example, only authorised personnel may be permitted to enter the inner cordon. A police officer will stand by the cordon and will keep a record or log of everyone who enters the scene and their time of entry and departure. The scene investigators will wear personal protective equipment, or PPE, which is normally a scene of crime suit, gloves, often two pairs that are taped at the cuff, overshoes and a face mask. This PPE is worn to minimise the possibility of contamination of the scene by the scene investigators and also as a protection for the scene investigators against contaminants and hazards which may be present. The scene investigators will also establish a common approach path. This is the route that everyone entering and exiting the scene will follow. The common approach path allows people to move within the scene while minimising the possibility of contaminating the scene. Prior to establishing a common approach path, the scene of crime officers will examine the route to ensure that no evidence is missed. Scenes are recorded by crime scene investigators using video, photography and written notes. It is very important to have an accurate record of the activities undertaken during the scene investigation and in particular what photographs are taken, what actions and decisions were undertaken and their rationale, what was the sequence of activities and who did what. These scene notes are called contemporaneous notes, which means that they were written at the time of the examination and form an important part of the forensic science process and the evidential chain of custody. When items are recovered from crime scenes by the investigators, they are packaged into appropriate containers and a unique reference number, or URN, is written onto the container. The containers are sealed at the scene. All recovered items are documented in the examiner's notes and may be examined further in a laboratory. Once items are identified and recorded, they are recovered from the scene. The chain of custody is a means whereby the item can be accounted for from the moment it is collected to its appearance in court. Each package will carry a label, signed and dated by any person that examines the item. Different types of packaging material are used depending on the type of sample and the packaging material prevents the sample from being contaminated, thereby ensuring the integrity of the sample throughout the investigative process. Changes to a landscape can occur even after a short period of time, so the search for clandestine burials can be a challenging exercise for the investigation team. As we have briefly discussed, the search phase is often categorised by a multidisciplinary approach that involves police officers trained in search techniques, together with a range of forensic experts, often including the forensic archaeologist. This team will attempt to identify the location of the clandestine burial and other areas that may be of interest. There are a variety of different search techniques that can be used depending on the case and possible location of the remains. Regardless of the search techniques that are used, the identification of any suspicious area within the landscape must ultimately be investigated by the forensic archaeologist. In our case involving the discovery of the human bone in woodland on the Law Hill in Dundee, Police officers have attended the scene and the forensic anthropologist has subsequently identified that the bone is human. The police have set up an outer scene cordon and the crime scene investigators will set up the common approach path and inner scene cordon. On closer inspection of the woodland, a small area of disturbed soil has been marked by a red flag as a location for further investigation. A police search team were sent into the woodland to search for any additional items of potential forensic significance. 
any items of interest would be seized as exhibits and kept for examination and analysis at a later date. This process will be overseen by the crime scene manager who will ensure the integrity of the crime scene and that the evidence is correctly identified, recorded, recovered, packaged, labelled and removed from the scene. The appropriate forensic specialists will work in conjunction with the crime scene manager and the crime scene investigators to examine particular aspects of the scene as required.